uh, it was reported that you are legally challenging the purported withholding of 730,300 ringgit allocated for MOA last year, right? Now, if I were to compare you and another politician uh, who is also on the opposition block, uh, we know him for his uh, acrobatics on the field. Uh, one, uh, Datuk Sri Muhammad Sanusi, Mat No, oh, okay. Kedah Menteri Besar. Now, he, despite his shenanigans and whatever he says sometimes, I have grown to respect him in a certain way and because he announced recently that Kedah has secured top spot in approved investments. That's true. Right? Uh, amounting to 31.3 billion in Q1 of 2024 this year, right? Now, and the thing about him, and I, res and I and again, I respect him because he is a politician. He plays the game. He he invites PMX to come and uh, witness memorandum signings, you know, launch of the Kulim Park and all that. Why haven't you gone that route to do the same in terms of, for example, like, like as what you promised early on in the elections, you said you want to provide more jobs in mm -hmm. Moa, make it a tourist hotspot in the northern part of Johor. Why not focus on that? And because... The political reality is allocations are at the discretion of the Prime Minister, right? That's the unfortunate reality. Instead of going there, why not follow his example? Okay. First and foremost, there's a substantial difference between managing a parliament and a state. Of course, I know. I mean, but according to the constitution, the state is given a lot of flexibility, autonomy, especially on issues of land, water, etc. Um, and when you are part of state government, it comes with a lot of allocations as well mm. and managing the whole state budget, etc. Uh, however, I completely agree with you. I think people are not giving due credit to uh, Menteri Besar Sanusi. Mm. Uh, I think what he has proven in Kedah, especially managing the economy, uh, you look at proof investments, not just this year, but three years since three years ago, mm. I think a lot of credit should be given mm. uh, to him. Um, now to answer specifically about diplomacy. Uh, I'm a firm believer in diplomacy. What more bipartisanship? I mean, yeah. I would never have gotten only 18 without bipartisanship. Yeah. And uh, I'm not someone who disregard the position of the prime minister. While I may have disagreements, it's nothing personal. Mm. It's a policy disagreements. Have I negotiated? Actually, I followed exactly what the prime minister said mm. since last year. Prime minister said in parliament, recorded in the parliament handset, you need to negotiate with the deputy prime minister too. Yes, and you did that three Immediately, times. Immediately, yeah. I met up. Twice physically, three times surat menyurat. In total, five times. And then recently, I asked again in parliament uh, towards the prime minister, so what else should I do? And I said, oh, uh, he acknowledged, firstly, there's an acknowledgement that Moa is the one who has negotiated, but then there's, he moved the goalpost a little bit by saying, ah, but you can't negotiate. Now you need to you need to get the leader of opposition to negotiate on behalf of you. This is new for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was not brought to my intention by the prime minister before this. I said, oh, now I need to go through the leader of opposition. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. But you know, the funny part, before this, it is his own supporters, his own party who said, oh, you should not even be with PN. You should never work with PN. You should never meet up with this, uh, with, with, with PN leaders. But mm. today, it is an acknowledgement that I must work with them. Mm. Sure, I have no problem. I've actually met up with the leader of opposition, Datuk Sri Hamza, not once, twice, many times, right? Uh, and, and, and I've seen him also meet up with the Deputy Prime Minister a few times mm. on this matter. So on this, I think you really need to look, there is diplomacy, but at the same time, you need to know where that diplomatic route will take you. Mm. Because on this, the reason why I finally took the other route, which is to sue in court, is because I've tried it so many times. Mm. When you try it so many times and you know that there is injustice which is being done, do you just keep quiet? Or do I just remain naive, thinking that, oh, never mind, I'll just wait and something will happen? Previously in 2020, I didn't just wait and wait. Mm. I actually met up with the Prime Minister then, Tan Sri Mirin mm. Yassin, to propose a confidence supply agreement. And then Datuk Ismail Sabri, I did the same. Mm. Datuk Ismail Sabri said, no, you need to follow how Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri did it. If he followed what Datuk Sri Ismail did it, we would have gotten our allocations. Yeah. I negotiated with Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri directly twice. He was very kind. He's a gentleman. He said, when he said yes, yes. When he says no, no. So he, he is a gentleman. Mm. My hope is, someone like Datuk Sri Ismail, who have gone through a lot of turbulence, who have been wronged uh, in his political career, and, and I will not defend the injustices of the past. Yeah. I think he is someone, and his family in particular, has gone through a lot. Um, and, and I'm quite sympathetic of that. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. um, my hope is someone who has gone through uh, that kind of injustice will know that to heal and to move Malaysia forward mm. is about looking forward and ahead. And to mm. ensure that the past mm. will not hinder Malaysians from moving forward. That's my hope. But 
I mean, that, that's that's fair. But in terms of your political strategy, now that in that same article, apparently there is alleged that the AG may even block your request. Oh, they, they have. I mean, they, 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 they are trying. So what's court. next? Um, I have to leave it uh, to the court of law. Mm. Uh, the fact of the matter is I need to try. I need to try every single way. I need mm. to try diplomacy. Mm. I need to try in court. Mm. I need to try in parliament. And I will try every single route possible. Similarly, mm. how in Undi 18 took place, you only saw what happened in parliament. You didn't see all the negotiations which happened behind. Yeah, I'm sure a lot happened. I yes. will try using every single route possible. But mm. is this the only single issue which I bring up? No. In parliament, out of like 10 issues, this is just like half of it. I mean, not half. Is it one out of the 10 yeah. uh, which I raise up. My role as a member of parliament in more continue. You mm. mentioned just now uh, about then what can I do uh, in, in, in more? In terms of tourism in Moa, I think now it has skyrocketed so much. Mm. We have been promoting Moa so much in Singapore. We have ensured that all the tourism uh, amenities in Moa is getting better, uh, has been upgraded in terms of the two major industries, which is nursery and also furniture. furniture yeah. They export close to 10 billion per annum, 300 containers a day out of Moa. Mm. Um, and, and, and these are two huge economic amplifiers. Yep. Uh, and this is something which we've been working on since my first term in parliament above and beyond that to ensure that Moa becomes a livable city because back then what Moa is so well known for being a city for retirement mm. in, in Basa people say Banda Orang Besaro mm. so that's why when I was a minister I brought uh, the uh, youth hub to Moa mm. a 25 million ringgit allocation and then it was supposed to also come with a public swimming pool but when the government changed they scrapped the, the, the public swimming pool but they still kept mm. the, the other components and today uh, it's about to be ready. And I think it's about to be launched in one or two months, mm. right? Um, the, the Tunku Makota Ismail you, you sent and on this, I must give credit to Tunku Makota uh, because he came up with the idea of creating youth hubs across Johor, not, mm. uh, not, uh, not just in Moa. Mm. And he resolved the land issue, which yeah. I couldn't. As a minister, I can only uh, get allocations. Land is under the state and uh, 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 Tuanku played a very big role uh, in resolving this issue. But I'm trying my best in the smallest of ways to keep on improving the situation in Moa while but, I combat things on a federal level. Federal level. But do, do you think that that approach has uh, sort of uh, uh, cannibalized your work that you are doing now? It, it sort of cannibalizes what you're doing because instead of people focusing on what you do outside of it, they should hear these stories because mm. doesn't that help build your profile as a political leader and a future perhaps prime minister? Shouldn't that be the focus? And maybe you are your worst enemy in this case. Mm. I mean, there must be a balance, right? Uh, because if you don't play your role as a check and balance, then you won't get the institu institutional change and reforms. Mm. What more, you don't build the expectation for the public to understand what's going mm. on. Mm. I mean, just to share one, one small um, anecdotal experience. When I was doing my run from uh, Moa to Parliament, I got so many texts mm. coming from friends, family members, and people I've never met saying that they never knew that allocations were given differently if you're in government. Yeah, even my father today was so surprised when yeah. I told him that. <laughs> Many people didn't yeah. know. No one knows, yeah. But in order for you to get reform, the, the start of that reform must be basic awareness. Yes. If people don't know, people won't demand the government or the MPs to institute or legislate mm -hmm. uh, uh, for that change. So I agree with you at the same time. I mean, if, if I wanted to go hardcore position all the way, which is to say, you know, I don't, I don't even recognize my prime minister, you know, there are some, mm -hmm. <laughs> there are some who, yeah. who, who, who actually do that, you know, um, but I don't, I mean, I recognize the prime minister, I recognize the government of the day. Uh, I want to ensure that there is stability and I want to fight on issues and policies. And when it comes to politics, let's deal with it during times of election, what, which is three, four years from now, so far away, so far away right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and, and this toppling, toppling, this is not me, right? I'm focusing really uh, on being a good opposition member. Okay.